is um, would, would you agree with me that society has a certain responsibility to provide resources? Absolutely. You know, and, and they're uh, us. They're our brothers and sisters and children and aunts and cousins. They're us. Yeah. I mean, it's all interconnected. But that's where I sometimes um, hesitate at the mention of food banks because the way I see the majority of them run doesn't make them particularly effective resources. No, but that's something we as a culture need to be working on to make them effective resources. Yeah. But you when they understand when that it's not, uh, I mean, most of the food banks I'm familiar with will respond to a momentary emergency and give you enough for two or three days. You know, and what we're dealing with in a lot of situations... There are food banks you can come to every week. You know, we need something that will be every week and will give you enough for a week. Mm -hmm. You know, the biggest complaint about most of our um, social welfare governmental programs is that they do not provide what is needed. They only give you 30 to 50 to maybe 60 percent of what you actually and need. And they're spotty and they're all over the place and you don't have a car and how do you get there mm -hmm. and the bus system in this city is pathetic. <laughs> um, so that's not I going to, to help. Agree, I'm afraid. I, I, sorry to offend anyone in the public transit system, but I, without exception, every time I have tried to use it, I've wound up in the wrong place, mm -hmm. and it's taken and me late. three times as long. Yeah. And in most cases, I just about had to walk three miles to get home because I couldn't get where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. But in any case, so that's these, another thing for us to work on. These people come out and they get a, a change of clothes and a hundred dollars if it's their first time out. If they've been through that revolving door two or three times, they're lucky if they get a change of clothes. They get a change of clothes and a hundred dollars. Should they be spending that hundred dollars on food? Probably not. So they should be able to go to the food bank and get a week's worth of food. Um, but how many of them would know that? Exactly. That's what the resources are now being able to help them with. You know, the, it would be an interesting challenge for, for anyone, I guess, to say, okay, yeah, I have one change of clothes and $100 and nothing else in the world. How do I restart my life? Yeah. And is it possible within the society in which I live? And if it's not, what resources do I need to work to create? And that's why you have to start thinking about it from the day you come in, not two weeks before you leave. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say everyone watching, start thinking about it now, if you haven't yeah. already. You know, to create a society that values every member, um, whether they've been incarcerated or not, and has the resources there so that the proactive person can legitimately get their needs met. I'm, it, it's not a new phenomenon, and unfortunately it's not localized either, but uh, I'm astonished at the number of employers who are not paying a living wage anymore. Uh -huh. And I keep wanting to ask, where do your employees live? They can't all be married or live with their parents. And the employer will say, that's not my job. And I would say, oh yes it is. Exactly. Because everything's interconnected, and at some point it will be you or your children or your cousin or your spouse or somebody you know who is in the same problem and or they gets, can't find housing, they can't find victimized. living. Gets victimized. Or gets victimized by the system or victimized mm -hmm. by an individual who has their own psychological, emotional brokenness. Well, or, or is simply at the end of their rope, you know? Nothing worked, no job, no place to live. Um, my family is still the same family they were when I went in, and that's part of why I went in. And all of these things build up to, okay, well, I'm just going to rob a bank. Yeah. I mean, there's, there are negative consequences that come from leaving someone in a place of desperation. Right. If society does not respond all. to its citizens in a way that shields them from those extremes of desperation, it can hardly blame them for doing whatever they have to do to survive when the moment comes. That's it. It's not us and them, it's us. And we need to be proactive about that. Um, what's this NIMBY stuff? Not in my backyard. I don't want a halfway house in my neighborhood. Why? They're living there anyway. Let me tell you right now. You have ex-felons living in your neighborhood. Which is not to try to encourage people to be frightened. No, it's to encourage them to pay attention. You don't know well, who they are because they're just people. Well, they are people, and they're... 
in all likelihood not dangerous to you? Most of them, no. Um, and if they're you know, getting support, if they're getting community support, church support, societal support, mm -hmm. they then have better choices and better examples to make better choices. What ballpark figure? What percentage of people, when they are released into society, um, are people that we actually need to know about in terms of safety? In terms of their violent, um, a very, very small percentage. Less than 1%? Probably. Okay. Most of them, most people in prison are doing time on a drug-related crime. Okay. They were stoned when they did it, or they were getting money to support their habit. Okay. If so we deal with that, if we're proactive with that, where are our drug use prevention programs? Yeah. Well, that's where I'm, I frequently roll my eyes and, and uh, laugh about it being the American strategy. You know, that uh, the example I always give is if there was a particular bluff along the Grand Canyon where people wanted, it was so beautiful people wanted to take pictures and they kept getting too close and falling off the cliff. The American strategy across the board is to build a hospital at the bottom mm -hmm. instead of a handrail at the top. At the top, yes. Exactly. You know, that's what we do again and again and again. And we, we're smarter than that. We can do better. You know, it would cost a lot less. It would be, uh, it would make so much sense. It's just plain intelligent to put a handrail at the top. You know. But then people say, well, I'm so smart, I wouldn't go over the edge. And the pressure behind you pressure behind is what could pushes you. push you over the edge. Yeah. So Nobody don't tell me about. Nobody chooses to go over the edge. Very few do. And we as a culture need to be proactive with intervention on the homeless, mm -hmm. um, single family, single parent families, um, keeping kids in school, um, food, mm -hmm. proper nutrition, treating drug addiction as a disease mm -hmm. and addressing it early and actively, 